The Milwaukee PBS Next Avenue Community Conversation Series is made possible through generous funding provided by the Helen Daniels Bader Fund, a Bader philanthropy. Hi, I am John McGivern in this Next Avenue Community Conversations. I am at Lawrence University in Appleton, Wisconsin, and our topic of conversation tonight is you are never too old to learn. So whether we're talking about academic learning or experiential learning, what we're gonna to discuss tonight is why is lifelong learning important? When I think about lifelong learning, I think about my mom. My mom spent over 30 years in her life working at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee where she was the book buyer, trade book buyer, meaning that she didn't buy the textbooks. She bought the books that she thought the students would, could, and should read. My mother's 91 years old. She reads uh, no less than two books a week. If you were to ask my mother what's on the New York Times bestselling list, she'd let you know. If you wanted a really good summer light read, she would give you some suggestions. My mother is a lifelong learner. My partner Steve just spent eight weeks taking a course at a lifelong learning center in Milwaukee on pottery. Eight weeks, one night a week, four hours a night, 32 hour course, and he came home with two bowls and two small plates. He was so proud of the work that he had done. He had never sat at a wheel before. He never sat in a group of people with like interests in learning an art form. My partner is a lifelong learner. So what we're gonna talk about tonight is lifelong learning and my first two guests, they are professors here at Lawrence University and they are instructors at Bjork London, which is the Lawrence University Lifelong Learning Center on the quiet side of Door County. And before we talk to our first two guests, let's take a look at this. If people remember our Appleton episode, uh, we mm -hmm. talked about this place yeah. um, when we did Lawrence University and their connection and commitment to this place here in Door County. Since 1980, we've had our, our adult seminar program going on. And so from mid-June through end of October, we have two or three seminars a week, wide variety of classes. Uh, we try to mirror at Lawrence University's liberal arts curriculum. Yeah. So we have art, religion, nature, music, and uh, one of our more famous uh, alumni, Terry Moran, ABC News, sure. he teaches here every year. So we try to get contemporary topics also. Is it a week? It's a up? week. So our guests would come on Sunday late afternoon and leave Friday uh, after lunch. They spend the mornings in the class and then afternoons and evenings are free to roam and explore Dark County. Yeah. So our tagline is, a vacation with a focus. Nice. Now that was a great afternoon that we spent at Bjorklund. And we're here with our guests. Thanks for joining us. We have uh, Marsha Bjornerud, who is a Lawrence University professor of geology. And we have uh, Jerry Poder, who is Lawrence University professor of history and a Robert S. French professor of American studies. Thanks so much for helping us. Yeah. Great to be here. Uh, but we could talk about Lawrence University for a moment, um, about, about your, what, what you do during the academic year, and then let's, let, let's, let's go to Door County, okay? During the academic year, uh, uh, I teach courses in modern American history, basically from the Civil War on. I teach a course on Abraham Lincoln, I teach a course on the 1960s, I teach a course on the JFK assassination, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, I do research and write, but I teach uh, uh, modern American history. Very good. Marsha? Well, I teach big history. You do. Um, I teach a course on the history of Earth and life. It covers four and a half billion years in 10 weeks. And I also teach um, upper level courses in geology as well as um, in the environmental studies program. Great. If, if you're in Door County, what are you instructing? Usually geology and, and natural history courses. It's yeah. a beautiful venue um, right on the Niagara Escarpment, of course. Um, and so there's a long geologic story right in the, in the backyard of Bjorklund and, and um, environs to explore. And who signs up 
And who, who is, is it? Is it people of all walks? Absolutely. And um, interests? People who live on Earth and want to know something about the way the planet works. <laughs> That's a broad range, Marcia. <laughs> yeah. So I think people um, who have some interest in how landscapes have come to be, places they have known maybe all their lives, but want to understand the backstory a little bit more. Is there a committee that says, this is what we need this year, or do you just say, this is what I want to teach? Usually, it's uh, I say, this is what I want to teach, and yeah. if, uh, uh, if, if Mark Briesman is, uh, uh, is amenable, uh, right. he has me come up. Um, can you talk about, uh, logistically, what's the schedule at Bjork Linden? So usually, the courses run in the mornings, mm -hmm. so three hours of conversation, maybe discussion of readings, and in my case, often walking around the grounds and, and um, looking at the lake shore looking at rocks, talking about landscape evolution. And then usually in the afternoon, people are free to um, explore Door County on their own, um, although I often offer optional field trips to other places that are within an easy drive. Right. So it's, it's three hours in the morning uh, separated by a break uh, mm -hmm. where there are snacks. We usually con con continue our discussion over lunch, uh, and then the students can just enjoy uh, Door County, and I can take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Is there testing? Is it? None. Did, did, no. Okay. No. Oh, Marsha. Okay, Marsha. <laughs> See, Marsha was like, yeah. no. 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 We, have, we have to make sure our potential students understand they will not be tested. Right. Uh, there, there, are, there, there are no exams. The, the atmosphere is relaxed. Yeah. yeah. I've had experience uh, being an instructor for Elder Hostel, which it seems very similar to me. There's some overlap, but you don't necessarily have to be a, a senior to take these, these classes. There we go. <laughs> Can you talk about the difference between your students in the summer or your students in Indoor County compared to your students during an academic year? We have really good students at Lawrence, but of course they're here to earn a degree and maybe to get credentials to go on to grad school and get a job. <laughs> Whereas people who are coming to the Bjorklund and seminars are really coming out of a, a sincere, earnest desire to learn something new. Yeah. And I think having had a little more life experience are more receptive than maybe students who are still more preoccupied with their social group and what's new and what's next. Right. So I really enjoy the classes at Bjorklund because people bring a rich um, biography with them into sure. the classroom yeah. and you can really draw on that in, in the teaching. Yeah, you know when you've spent your life in the working world which is not always the most pleasant place to be uh, I think as you get older you get more and more of an appreciation for the life of the mind mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the privilege it is to be able to learn and I think we get that from our older students. Mm -hmm. And younger time in my life, you know, if, when I was in high school and when I was in college and, and, all, and people would have said, you know, learning continues through life. I would have been like, once I get out of here <laughs> and I get that paper, you know, but you never stop. You it ne never stops. And the importance of what, what lifelong learning is, can, can, we, can we just talk about for a moment both your takes on why it's important? One of the last things I always say to my, my students as they graduate is, Every day for the rest of your life, I want there to be a good book on your night table. Mm. A good book, not yes. a book, but a good book. <laughs> uh, and that sets the tone for the expectation that we have as Lawrence professors, that you're going to treat the rest of your life as a learning experience. If you engage in lifelong learning, you will get the most out of your life. You will not be cheated. Life. Yes. And I would add, I think just being an engaged citizen mm, is part of absolutely. being part of the conversation, um, understanding how the world is changing. Um, that's another. That's, yeah. that's why I emphasize, I'm obviously a history professor, so I'm obviously emphasizing history and telling my students, both at Lawrence and at Bjorklinden, that you cannot understand what is going on uh, today in contemporary politics uh, unless you understand the political history of this country. And yeah. I would add, you can't understand what's going on today in the natural world without True. understanding the yes. deep history. Same. Yeah. It's a joy. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank I really you, appreciate John. it. My pleasure. So they spent some time um, on, on the quiet side of Door County at Bjorklund. Then there's another program at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh called LIR, which is uh, learning and retirement. I think it's a different model. So let's uh, let's take a look at this. Okay. The basic model was that the learning and retirement programs or institutes, as Elder Hostel called them, were member driven. 
In most programs, someone, somebody at the university or someone somewhere, decides what the curriculum will be. In these programs, it was very self-directed learning. It was very much based on the idea that people know what they want and need to learn. And so they can make the decisions about what courses shall we put together, what, what, what trips shall we plan, how, what do we want to learn? We will be in charge of our own curriculum. We could do something here on campus for the retired people in and around the Oshkosh area. You're not going to get a PhD going to the classes, <laughs> but for people who don't know anything about whatever the subject may be, you come away with some intermediate or at least beginning knowledge of the subject. And what you do with it, other than maybe it brightens your day, uh, you've learned something, you walked away a little smarter than you did when you walked in. Uh, so there are all kinds of wonderful interactions. So not, not only was it learning, but it was a chance to socialize and interact with other members of the class. And so it's just, just a lot of fun. I want to thank LIR for sending us this tape. It gives us a great understanding of what LIR does in Oshkosh. And we are joined by Mary uh, Beorgen, who is the past president of learning and retirement at UW Oshkosh, right. and Bill Bracken, 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 who is now the president Correct. of learning and retirement at UW Oshkosh. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank Let's you. talk about this. Uh, I asked you a moment ago how, how long it's been going. It's been going for how long? Over 20 years. We celebrated our 20th anniversary in 2017 with a big party. With a big party? Yes. Might as well, Mary. That's what I say. <laughs> I like <good>. parties. <laughs> so if I were in an elevator with you and I said, give me your elevator speech on LIR, what, how would you describe it? I would say that the Learning and Retirement Program that's affiliated with the University of Wisconsin at Oshkosh is a very rich program for seniors, older people. We have over 50 programs every semester in our course catalog. We also have five to 10 tours, coach tours every semester, and we also have special interest groups, like we have a garden group, we have a reader's choice group, which is a book review, uh, book club type of special interest group. There's a life writing uh, program. And we also have, at some times, a walkers program where people get together and decide to walk and mm -hmm. stay healthy with walking. Yes. So those groups are, affili are subgroups of the learning and retirement program. For people that have special interests, they decide their own programming and their own schedule, but they're part of our group as well. So we offer a variety of learning experiences. And it's a great mix of academic as well as experiences. Yes, Bill? That's correct. Yeah. We have the combination. We have the best of both worlds. Yeah. You get the academic people in, the professors, to talk about what they're doing research on, as well as people that have just a, a knowledge that they've built up over the years and are willing to share it. How did you get involved? I was involved for about three years. My wife asked me to come to a couple sessions, and I liked it. And then I retired, and then I became president. That, 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 that's how fast it works. <laughs> we grab them when we can. <laughs> Let's talk offerings, because you just said that there are 50 offerings in your catalog, right. which means like, to organize 50 offerings and to sell 50 offerings, um, first of all, I love your model. Because the model is that it's a fee to be a member. Is 100 that, bucks a year, and you can go to as many or as few as you want. Which is remarkable. Right. And then there's sometimes a course fee on top of that for a member and a non-member. Is that right? Some non-members, if they go to something, you pay a little more. Yeah. Some, some of our tours, for example, we have, if you want to bring a friend, that might cost a little more for the right. tour. And are a lot of the offerings similar year after year? Like, is there something that better be in that catalog? Right from the start, people enjoyed going to the theater. They do. So we had uh, one of our earlier members, Don Burdick, who was a faculty member in the theater department, and he joined LIR, and he and some other people developed a program called the First Nighters. So they would get together 
with LIR members uh, for a dinner at some restaurant in Ashgar. Someone from the theater would talk about the uh, current production, and then they would go to the play that night. Uh, well, then Don passed away, and there was a little fall off with the number of people that participated. And from the feedback, one of the reasons was because people were getting older, they didn't want to go out at night, especially in the winter time. So eventually my friend Pat Warden and I took over the program and we made it into a matinee and we call it matinee at the March for the March Theater. Which is really special. Yes. To, to, to be an audience member and before to, to have somebody from that production come and talk, it's, right. it's, 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 it's great. Get That's more insight. wonderful. No doubt. Yeah, and your classes generally are, it's not like Bjorklund where they go for a week and is it, no. is it, it's usually an afternoon or an evening? Correct, usually morning or afternoon. Mm -hmm. okay. Typically an hour and a half lecture mm -hmm. and question and answer. Yeah. That's typically what a program is. I mean, it's a great program and uh, 22 years later, um, is, is the involvement, do, do, do you have a, is, is the future looking bright for you guys? We've got about 284 members right now. Which is and, great. And, and we'd like to get more. Yeah. We're talking, I think the future, you know, Oshkosh just merged with two other universities, Fox Valley and Fond du Lac. So we're talking about maybe coming north yeah. into the Appleton area. So that's a goal of ours. Can we, can we talk about how it got connected with um, UWO? Our roots yeah. started with UWO. As you saw in the clip that you showed, Marsha Rossiter was there, and she was a program director for continuing education at the university. And she had the vision to want to promote a program through UWO that would be member driven. And then the chancellor at the time was in favor of it, and several other people at the university. And then at the same time, there was a group of people in Oshkosh who were looking for that kind of continuing education, where right. they didn't have to yeah. go to a class, they didn't have to write term papers and take tests. Mm -hmm. They'd been through all of that before. Right. They just wanted to learn to learn. Right. Yeah. So the in two came together. In a course that interests them. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how LIR was born at the University of mm -hmm. Wisconsin Oshkosh. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank we you. really appreciate your insight. Thank you. And continued success with this program. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thanks. So when I think of uh, continuing education, I'm from Milwaukee and I live in downtown Milwaukee and there is a program that if I were to become a student in continuing education, what I would do is go to UWM because did you realize that at the universities, the Wisconsin universities, that you can audit a class after the age of 62 for free. It's a good way to think of continuing education. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this, okay? What I think people don't always think about is it's not just the traditional, just out of high school person that comes here to study. We have students from every age group, from some as young as 14, 13, 14. We have a couple of those kinds of geniuses don't that you? visit us all the time. <laughs> But those that are up and through their 80s, yeah. because a well-known secret is, age 62 and above, you can audit a class at UWM for free. Is that right? So you name it, we've got it here. Turn around, look who's Shut there. Pounds, I'm so glad I ran into you. So if you want to continue lifelong learning, that's an option. Go to the uh, one of the state schools if you're over 62 and audit one of the classes. And I'm so glad that now we have an opportunity to talk to some learners who have taken advantage of these um, lifelong learning programs. We have uh, Linda Larman, uh, Bjorkland Seminar Participant and Volunteer, and we have Don Ellingson, who's a Learning and Retirement Participant and Treasurer. How are you guys? Good. 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 Thanks Thank for helping you. us. Let's, let's talk about um, what, what you've taken advantage of in these programs. Um, Linda? Oh, I've taken about 12 courses you over have. the last 12 or 15 years. I've really been a dabbler. Um, I try not to take things that are closely related to what I did for a living. Um, so I've taken, I think Terry Moran was mentioned earlier, I've taken yes. his class. <clears throat> very informative, very fun. Um, there's a Lincoln scholar named James Cornelius. I've taken two of his classes. Mm -hmm. um, each one is centered around something else. I've taken a course on medieval art. I've taken a music course. And this summer I'm venturing way out into painting. 
Uh, how did you how did you learn of Bjork Linden? I am a Lawrence alumna, Bjork. and um, in the early 2000s, I was on something called the alumni board, and uh, we had a retreat at Bjork Linden, and I fell in love. What a great place for this course of study, for any course of study. Absolutely. Yeah, the atmosphere is beautiful. Right. Yeah. Can right. we talk about what you've studied? What what you what you're uh, what you're up to next? Well, probably my focus is a little bit more on actually getting involved with the organization. Okay. Uh, yes, I've signed up for a number of different courses, and you know, of course, I love things like history. And it w we had a guy come in one time and do uh, four two-hour sessions on World War II. But uh, mm -hmm. it's such a variety of, of subjects that, uh, and it's so nice that our members can just sign up for pick the things that they enjoy. Uh, Personally, I've been very involved as being treasurer with putting out financials. So that's one thing that, I've, that I have been doing for the past three years. Uh, I've also gotten involved in organizing tours. And these tours go where generally? Well, it might be uh, one of the first tours I did was to Alliance Laundry Systems out in Ripon, hmm. Wisconsin. And we took a plant tour and we had lunch and we stopped at the Little White Schoolhouse in Ripon. More recently, I organized a trip to Kohler, Wisconsin. So they did a, a tour of the design center there at Kohler. Remarkable. Uh, lunch, went to Walder House afterwards. Yeah. Um, and even more recently, we went to an alpaca ranch. Hmm. It was quite a successful tour. We had 50 people on that tour, but uh, it's a working ranch where they raise alpacas, so we had a little presentation. And then the stars of the program came in, which is to say about eight alpacas. <laughs> and everybody had like a little like a little frisbee full of feed, and they would come right up to you. And so yeah. that has been keeping me very busy uh, setting up the tours. There's quite a, quite a lot to do with that, getting the venue. We do take input from our members as much as we can, but you still got to come up with a tour that makes sense uh, and that will uh, that will sell. And who comes up with that? We, we have a curriculum committee, uh, quite a few people. I, I would guess there are at least 10, 12 people that are active, involved, actively involved in setting up those 50 or 55 events each semester that Mary mentioned before. Yeah. So there are a lot of people, and yes, I get. Mary is good at that. She gives me little brochures when she goes somewhere and says, we could, should think about, the, yeah. about this. But you don't always know what's going to work. Do you see a lot of the same faces when you take these classes? I, I do, typically, yes. We have a, a cadre of people, I think, that enjoy the tours. They don't all go on all the tours, of course. But uh, yes, you see many familiar faces and familiar names. Yeah. Uh, Linda, you talk about volunteering. Can you, can you talk about that? What do you do to volunteer? Well, I lived in Door County for a while, and um, I uh, would go over to Bureau Clinton at times, and my, I guess my major endeavor was giving chapel tours. Oh, sure. It, you may know that uh, Bureau Clinton is the home of something called the Boynton Chapel, which mm -hmm. is a, a modeled after a medieval Norwegian Stavkirka. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Bus tours come there, or just small groups, or sometimes you run into people just wandering around, could I see this? So that was fun. And now I'm a, a member of an informal committee called the Bjorklund Advisory Committee. It's a group of locals and uh, Lawrence alumni who have the privilege of um, working on ideas along with Mark and other staff for Bjorklund. Yeah. If you were to if you were to talk about why um, either one of your places is important to you as 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 an adult who's lived some years and why lifelong learning is important, well, what would you say? Well, Bjorklinen is a unique place, I believe. Um, I think there are some other colleges who have other you know, adjunct learning facilities, but um, not many of them. And Bjorklinen. Uh, is used during the school year. It's very valuable for students and faculty of Lawrence during the school year. As an adult who takes summer seminars, it's just such a beautiful spot. It's so tranquil. Mm -hmm. um, it can be just about anything you want it to be. Um, it can be very social um, also. Um, there's a diversity of courses offered. So it's, a, it's just a great experience, an intense learning and social experience. Nice. 
As far as my participation in LIR, I find that it's been a real nice come down from retirement, from working every day for a living. But I also appreciate the fact that it means so much for the people uh, in our members and mm. how much they enjoy it. I've had people say, I don't know what I would do without LAR. There you go. It says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Linda, Don, thank you so much for spending some time with us thank and you. giving us insight into uh, your experiences. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. I want to thank our six lifelong learning guests. And I especially want to thank Lawrence University for their hospitality. I want to close with a quote from Henry Ford. This is what he said. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether you're 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. Henry Ford. This is Next Avenue. I'm John McGivern. Thank you so much for being part of our conversation. I hit the road and uh, I taught a um, tidying class in Luxembourg. You taught what? Tidying. Tidying. The, the Marie Kondo Marie method. Oh, sure. Tidying Put it all on the bed and say goodbye to it? That's right. <laughs> yes. The Milwaukee PBS Next Avenue Community Conversation Series is made possible through generous funding provided by the Helen Daniels Bader Fund, a Bader philanthropy.